Hello and welcome to this edition of the Times Political Roundtable. I'm Krista Zvanovic, Assistant Managing Editor, here with Doug Ross, Editorial Page Editor, and Frank Mervan Jr. Uh, of the uh, North, Township. North Township. And we're here to talk briefly about um, our poverty series and what has transpired since then. Um, Frank, can you tell us what feedback you have gotten since um, the series ran and any other observations or comments you'd like to make since then? Well, the the fact that you highlighted it and brought it to the attention to the overall community is very important. So um, being selfish, a couple of things that people have talked to me about is they were very impressed with the fact that our average of work fair hours compared to the average of work fair hours in the state and throughout the other townships and how they like that we hold that accountable. Um, the other side of it is, is you shed light on what's really going on in our community. Um, the statistics that stand out is that about 90,000 out of 500,000 are receiving food stamps or TANF. And um, so that means they're at a poverty level. And another statistic that was in there is about four, about 50,000 kids are on free lunch programs. And um, what I observed also, which I've been advocating and also wanted to talk about is how important the mental health aspect of it to poverty is and make sure you inoculate yourself or give access to people who are in that area and you tied in the schools where we have programs with the schools and also health care. So the overall view of what I'm getting from your article or your expose was that it shed light on what we deal with every day. And um, so now what you've, you've created that buzz and you had an editorial, what do we do next? And so to continue the discussion and to continue it going forward, we need to be able to form something, uh, either a committee or a round table or a committee that figures out how to fight urban poverty level and throughout our county and our county and Laporte and Porter County. And so I just wanted to discuss those kinds of things and try and figure out what is the next step now that we have defined it. Uh, as a community and as a newspaper, because now you share responsibility. What do we do next going forward in order to elevate ourselves to the next level to be able to chip away at those numbers? So we know we have it. We know it's a high percentage. It's higher than in the nation. Now, what are we doing to go forward to be able to inoculate ourselves? We'll never get rid of it totally for multiple reasons. But to be able to chip away at those statistics that we're not ahead of the national average uh, is very important. Um, one of the things that you have taken on is transportation in North Township for um, for the poor, basically. But you know, other other special groups. Uh, why don't you discuss you know how that fits into um, the overall ad approach to s addressing poverty? Right. So when we really tear the onion apart in poverty, what you're going to find out is access to jobs, child care, um, criminal records and transportation are the key components that basically take people out of the equation for employment. You also have educational levels and skills and those things, but even if those people are trained, transportation, child care, and the ability to, to be mobile and to be able to get to those jobs are a serious indication of holding someone down, in which we don't want to do. So to give a 30-second view of transportation, so in 2012, prior to the RBA going down, Dial-A-Ride, which is an on-demand bus service. You call, you make an appointment, we pick you up at your home, we drop you off. We did about twelve to 13,000 rides. In 2013... Uh, it, it, per year? Or, per year. Okay. And so that it's... So I'm very clear. So that means we pick up a person at their house, we take them to their destination, that's one ride. We pick them up at their destination and we take them back. That's two rides. So we did 12,000 of those. In 2013, when the RBA went under and we received a grant of uh, a CMAC grant, which is a carbon reduction grant, we took on extra funding, which is about $600,000 per year. Our 2013 statistics were we did 36,000 rides and we're on pace to do about 42,000 rides in 2014. That money runs out. It's a three-year grant. We'll never get it again. So we've expanded our fleet. And the other thing that we've done, we went from six to 10, 10 buses. Uh, we also expanded our dispatch, and we also are partnered up with uh, AAA, a, private, a privatization or a hybrid program. So what we can't handle, we flip over to AAA. And so to really fine-tune your question, 
public transportation is the bridge to economic development. And if we don't have a solid public transportation system in our communities to take someone from East Chicago to a construction site in Merrillville or Crown Point, then that job will never exist. Then East Chicago is shut off from the rest of the economic boom that will be going on in our economy. And so it is one of my positions over the next three years to be able to find funding for a permanent transportation system within our region. We, I'm meeting with uh, Gary Public Transit and Mr. Wright and the, the, the acting director currently in the next couple weeks. They are currently running a fixed route. And not to get too technical, when they run a fixed route through Hammond and Highland and Munster, they're responsible for the paratransit a mile and a quarter or a mile and three quarters away. So if someone's designated as a paratransit rider who's handicapped or designated by a physician that can't get to the fixed route, they're responsible for that. Well, ultimately, we're duplicating services. I'm doing it, and the people in that area, through our uh, making people aware, know to call Dial-A-Ride. But they are providing the same service. So we are looking to basically contract or be able to handle that flow for them so that they can handle the rest of their services. So in the future, what I expect for public transportation or what my vision is, is GPTC is going to lead the way. They're the last man standing and they're positioning themselves to be able to take that over, realistically. Have been for five, six years. So that being said, I want to be able to create partnerships that allow us to be a part of that, either as the township or not as the township. I'm convinced that if those rides go away, and this is selfish, if my 46,000 rides go away or we go back to 12,000, those 32,000 rides or the people who need those rides the most to dialysis, to uh, rehab, to the doctor's office, to shopping centers are going to blame the North Township trustee. It's just a fact. And I knew that when we took upon that grant. So we have a deadline. The clock is constantly ticking. For and that the, is the end of 2014 or It's 2015? the end of 2015. Okay. So we have to find a permanent funding source, either a wheel tax, gasoline tax. So we have to sit down with the county. But before we do that, we really have to have a plan. And I envision a hybrid plan, a hybrid plan kind of like what we have now. You have on-demand throughout the county. You have the fixed route, and you have the capacity of bringing in private enterprise to be able to handle that overflow. Because the fact of the matter is, is they could do it cheaper. And I can give you statistics on what it costs me to do a ride and what it costs AAA. Point, and I didn't even know you were going to do this, but I'm pretty fine-tuned. $57 a ride. Cost of my employees, gas, pickup, drop-off, 16-person van. I pick you up, I take you to the shopping center. It's $57. AAA because of the contract is $40 a ride. Okay? So it's 17 so every two rides that North Township does, AAA could do 3. We still handle our volume because we're just as efficient as anyone else, but that overflow is being done cheaper. You have to include private enterprise to be able to offer that element. So going forward with a regional bus transportation system, you're going to have to have a subsidy, all public transportation subsidized because those individuals who have the complaint that I saw a bus it only had two people on it. Throughout the country, all developing counties, cities, and states have public transportation. It's subsidized. They are not designed to profit. You're lucky if you break even. That's why you get federal grants, state grants, and you, you have your portion of the property taxes. So we have to accept that. And there's got to be someone that comes forward and is able to explain that because we will still be fragmented as an economy in different communities if we don't open up to regional transportation to everyone. Well, and that's going to be one of the keys. Uh, the other key is how do you, you know, build a seamless um, education system? I mean, you know, we're talking about pre-K education. We don't even require kindergarten attendance yet. So how do we get to, you know, the goal of where we want to be with college graduates and, and uh, uh, tech school graduates, you know, uh, two-year degrees? How do you get to that point if you don't have the early input? And not to muddy it, but also I liked what you had said as part of the series, and if you could just touch on that briefly as well. I'm talking about young parents, incompetent parents. They love their children, but they're so young and inexperienced sure. themselves. They don't even know how to help their children, much less themselves, get a foothold into right. some education and training and a job and so forth. Right. Um, I'll answer your question first, and I'll come to yours. Because 
The simple fact is, uh, and I'm comfortable saying this, in our communities when babies are having babies, they only know what they know. So if a 17 and an 18 year old is having a child, or 15 and 16 year old, they're in high school. What the township has done, and it's baby steps, is we partnered up with Parents as Teachers. Parents and Teachers is a nationally recognized organization that comes to the home and teaches parents where their children should be developmentally. It gives them books. It helps them to balance their budgets. It helps them with nutrition. It's an in-house, in, in your home counselor that is responsible for us as 20 families, 10 from East Chicago and 10 from Hammond. And um, our ultimate responsibility is to try and change those individuals. So culturally, when children have children, and I, I don't know the statistics, but it peaked and then it went down. And in, in, the, urban, in the urban areas, it's higher statistically than it is in the suburban areas as far as children having children. You're always going to have that recycling of poverty because if, if that individual is incapable of getting a fifty to sixty thousand dollar a year job that will be able to sustain them for a lifetime uh, but yet they're working at McDonald's and they're nickel and diming themselves that they can't possibly get ahead you're always going to have that poverty barrier so how you fix that is obviously tied to your question it's education so pre-k I'm a big proponent of what the governor's done so the state of Indiana and the legislature, but it's a very small, slim number statistically. So it is 4,000 kids statewide, but the right. county, Lake County, is one of eight, I believe, candidates to have pre-K. Um, and I believe the deadline is Monday for them to submit their plan, which they're working on. Correct, right? and I, I've had meetings with Mr. Dennis Wittenmeyer because we were gonna hold press conferences and he's gonna hold conferences. The fact of the matter is, is our county the number two populated county in the state of Indiana should absolutely be part of that. But the number of participation or the number of participants is very limited. Um, four divided by 4,000, it could potentially be 1,000, but we only have, which is, which I learned from him, we only have one certified school that could be able to handle that. The state said you have to be certified in some, some nature and Purdue Cal is the one that handles that. So how many children are going to benefit from this new law that we all want to take care of it? So the bigger picture is to be able to offer, if this is the litmus test for pre-K, because then they're going to study outcomes, which already exists, but it's all about funding. Everything that we do is about funding. So if we're able to find more funding, then the, the first step in breaking poverty is early education. Early education and intervention when they're in poverty, because what you guys don't know the other big thing to poverty is it is a barrier to kids learning it really is we work with the school system in Hammond East Chicago and Whiting so when kids come to school and they say I couldn't do my homework because we didn't have electricity that's real life or a high school kid says well I've bounced from my neighbors to my aunts to my grandmas to my sisters and I haven't had time to do my homework um, and not to be too dramatic but if kids aren't eating they're not going to do well in school so all of those factors take a role in, in education. And so what schools have done, which is light years ahead of when I went to Morton in 87, most schools have social workers and social work teams that work through that. And they have those networks to say, well, you haven't been fed, there's a food bank here. Or you don't have school clothing, you go to the North Township Trustee's Office. So that's how that has developed over time. Since when we were in school, you didn't have a social worker, you had a guidance counselor, you may have had a psychiatrist, and you had your teachers and principals, administration. But now those urban core systems now have social workers because they know they're going to be faced with that. English is a second language. Those are barriers. So all of that contributes to what is going on as far as poverty. The solution, obviously, is all of us working together and being on the same page. I go to the school systems, we read, I try and reach out to the social workers before the school starts. Um, we do offer free school clothing. And I also go to um, the Hammond Federation of Teachers in the beginning of every year, hand out a manual of all the different social services in North Township so teachers can have that. And um, we've been doing that for eight years. So poverty is inoculated by education and economic development. But more importantly, how you work with what you have is you try and break it by parents as teachers, by pre-K, and by staying involved and not letting it get to the point of, and having an answer to, I don't have power, I don't have food, uh, and truancy. A big buzzword that's going on is truancy. It's going on with the state and in East Chicago. Um, if kids aren't in school, whose fault is it? And what are they up to? 
So the city of East Chicago and the, the East Chicago Foundations, they've put together a, uh, a steering committee on different issues that are going on from cradle to death and the quality of life in East Chicago. And one of the key components that Chief Becker's working on with his committee is truancy, making sure that not only the police department, but the school city has a policy. And who's going to get punished when that happens is the parents, which I'm a big believer in. So you're going to be moving forward with that, that type of approach. And I think that'll cut down on gang activity, violence, um, and, and certain things in the community, uh, those crimes that aren't over the top, but still it's being addressed. So all of those things are tied into education. Well, we've got our work cut out for us. I think it's safe to say that what you're doing, what's happening, I know Gary has been lauded for their truancy court and other programs. I think that everyone pretty much agrees we have to help people help themselves. No one is saying that people should get a handout for not doing anything, but sometimes people really don't know how to help themselves. So I laud you, and, and that's why the Times has embarked on this this project. So I encourage and exhort readers and citizens also to contact us with ideas or suggestions as well. And thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you.